Hitting stores October 7th this year, Mafia 3 is the long-awaited sequel to the criminally underrated series about the inner workings of organized crime in America during the mid-1900s. <laughs> From Mafia 1 through to Mafia 3, the series takes place over the course of 38 years and portrays a very vivid representation of all the sights and sounds you'd associate with American life during those years. Think of it like if Martin Scorsese directed a video game. You'll appreciate all the fine details present in stellar works such as Goodfellas, Boardwalk Empire or the more recently cancelled Vinyl. Mafia was all about real authenticity and telling a rich and emotionally captivating story, and both games released thus far have delivered on that promise. Remember, kid, this is your last chance. Czech writer and director Daniel Vevra was adamant about creating a mature and dramatic experience that followed closely to the cinematic inspirations of Scorsese's Goodfellas and Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather, and trust me, it wholeheartedly sticks to that intention. Ah, finally done. <sighs> okay, now who's gonna bury him? Mafia was already at odds with Grand Theft Auto 3, which released a year before and practically dominated the open world gangster market. But Mafia was different. It wasn't about being a sandbox shooter, it was about telling a more controlled and focused story with very intimate third person combat. Whereas GTA 3 had a more lighthearted and comedic sensibility, Mafia played itself very straight, with the somber tone and touches of character humour. It was violent, drenched in melancholia, and explored the mobster mentality with intelligence and creativity. Without spoiling the game, this striking monologue encapsulates the philosophy of the entire series. You know, the world isn't run by the laws written on paper. It's run by people. Some according to laws, others not. It depends on each individual how his world will be, how he makes it. Mafia was arguably a more contemporary western where outlaws rejected the legal system and set their own rules. Mafia 1 is set in the Great Depression era of the 1930s, in the Chicago-inspired setting of Lost Heaven. You play as Tommy Angelo, a taxi driver who's in the wrong place at the wrong time and ends up escorting two henchmen of local mobster Don Salieri from a rival gang, ultimately being offered a job and from there, you follow Tommy's subsequent rise to par. What's interesting is that the events unfold from Tommy's perspective as he recounts his story to a detective, desperately hoping to get out of the business. We see the world through Tommy's eyes, so there are instances where events occur off screen such as character deaths that leave open ambiguities and even influence Tommy's gradual uncertainty about the people he associates with. Like Goodfellas, there is a sense of paranoia and distrust that permeates throughout the story that makes you question character motives and fear for Tommy's life. These are fleshed out characters with distinct personalities and the world and storytelling is grounded in realism. More so, it was one of the first games to add an emotional layer to combat. Whereas GTA aimed for unremorseful chaos, Mafia was much more tightly focused, pitting you against less enemies but also making you feel more weight and consequence to your actions. There was a real gratifying kick behind each weapon, especially the Tommy gun and shotgun, but the way enemies fell down in anguish was quite intense. Some enemies would clench their wounds while others would crawl away in fear and agony, and for 2002, that was an immensely shocking thing to see. In fact, the gunplay actually mirrored the smooth and streamlined mechanics of Max Payne, which came out a year before it. This was further heightened by the impressive driving physics and vehicle controls, given that Mafia was originally conceived as a driver-inspired game. On a side note, interestingly enough, Team Soho came out with an almost identical game at the end of the same year called The Getaway, which for the record has zero connection whatsoever to Mafia. The Getaway was essentially the British version of Mafia, set in present day London and following the inner workings of organised crime in England with two different characters with alternative perspectives on the game's events, but that's a story for another time. Mafia's sequel didn't actually arrive until 8 years later, which while admittedly being a more downplayed experience, managed to maintain the heart and soul of the original game. You want to get into trouble again? Mama, would you rather me go back and get shot again? No. Exactly. No. Joe probably saved my life. 
Set between the 1940s and early 50s in Empire Bay, which was an amalgamation of New York, Chicago, LA, Boston and Detroit, you played as Vito Scaletta, an Italian immigrant who gets involved in organized crime to help pay his family's debt following his discharge from the army. Hi mama, I'm back. Vito, Vito my boy, my boy is home, I just will never see you again. <laughs> It's a much more personal rags to riches affair that places more emphasis on Vito's morality and his relationship with his friends and family. The game even wonderfully weaves itself into Mafia 1's narrative with a real poignancy that you never see coming. It catches you off guard yet fits extremely logically into the story. Both games told surprisingly profound and tragic tales and were carried by solid third person combat to reinforce its supremely believable world. For me, it's shocking to think that Mafia doesn't get the recognition it deserves, but ultimately in its time, it lived under the shadow of Grand Theft Auto, whereas the sequel came into a world where games had evolved as an art form. Mafia 3, however, seems to uphold the pathos and richness of the previous Mafia games. Set in 1968 in New Orleans-inspired New Bordeaux, we will be fitting into the shoes of Lincoln Clay, an African-American Vietnam veteran who was once part of the black mob before they were massacred by the Italian mob. In Mafia 3, Lincoln has sworn revenge and aims to take control with the help of three underbosses. Cassandra, leader of the Haitian gang, Burke, leader of an Irish mob, who has a bit of a Northern Irish accent going on, so I feel right at home hearing his voice. You're much too serious about all this. It takes the fun out of it. Besides, that's the worst that could happen. And then there's Vito Scaletta, the protagonist of Mafia 2, who ties the universe together. The impression I'm getting is that it retains the visual vibrancy of Mafia, with its stellar music and authentic world design, whilst also heightening Mafia as a more expansive experience through gameplay liberties. If you haven't played Mafia before, and you've always wanted to envision the mobster world through the lens of a character who rises through the ranks, the game certainly does its job. There is of course the Godfather and Scarface games which in their own right are wonderful as well, but Mafia has a certain flair that explores politics and economics in American society that's unmatched even by some of today's standards.